What's up guys, Joe McGovern with JMCAD Design and I got a new one for you. But before we get to that, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays from my family to yours. I've got a showdown here, nay, a duel to the death between AutoCAD and AutoCAD Architecture. We're making a simple 3D model of a shed and I don't know which one's gonna win, but we're gonna find out. Here we go. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do here obviously is to start two new documents. We're gonna go up to the A and hit new. You can go with the regular ACAD.DWT template. And we're gonna do the same thing over here in AutoCAD architecture. Now I'm gonna be doing these side by side so you guys can see them both as I'm going through the process. The first thing we're gonna do in AutoCAD is we're gonna use the polyline tool to draw a 12 foot by 10 foot shed. So we're gonna draw the outside lines. But before we can draw that polyline, we have to go to units and we gotta change the type to be architectural. That way it understands feet and inches. So when I go to do my polyline and I draw across by 10 apostrophe, that's gonna be 10 feet. You'll notice that the line goes right off the screen because it's not set, the limits are not set to draw something that's that size. So if you hit escape and you double click on the scroller on your mouse, that's a zoom extents, or you could use the zoom extents right here. That'll allow you to zoom out and see 10 feet of a line. So I'll go back to my polyline, I'll connect to the end here, I'll go down and we'll go 12 feet. And then we'll go back to the left, 10 feet. And then I'll close. Now. I had to hit escape after that first line I created, so now I'm gonna select both of these and type join to make them one polyline. The walls are gonna be 3.5 inches thick, so if I go to offset and I type 3.5, then I can offset off of this line in. I'm gonna draw a line for the center of where the door is gonna go and the center of where my windows are. I have two windows and they are 36 inches apart. So I'm gonna split that number in half and go 18 inches up and 18 inches down. That's gonna be the start of my windows. Using offset again, I'll go 24 inches because the width of my windows are 24. So, whoops, wrong way. 24 down, 24 up, disregard that line. Now, in order to draw these, let's do another offset on this door first. We're gonna go 36 inch door, so we're gonna go 18 left 18 right. What we need to do is we need to take the line tool and we got to close these boxes that we're making. Okay. So take these four lines then and join those together and you'll see it says four objects converted to one polyline. That's what we want. We want one polyline box for the size of the door. Okay. We also want to do the same thing on the windows. We're going to take a line and we're going to close one side and the other side. Selecting them, typing join, you'll get four objects converted to one polyline. These two, same thing. Close the left, close the right. Blue box around. Don't forget that a blue box is going to select only things that are fully inside of it, while the green box is going to select something that would be, or anything that would be touching it. So in this case, we want to go with a blue box, type join, and you get your four to one. Always pay attention to these numbers down here. Make sure that they are exactly what they should be. If there's four lines, it should say four objects. And if you want it to be one polyline, it should obviously say one polyline. All right. So now we've got our basic floor plan done here. And now I'm going to jump over to AutoCAD Architecture. In AutoCAD Architecture, I'm going to be using the wall tool. You'll see a little properties menu pops up. We're going to change the width of the wall to be 3.5. We're going to change the base height, which is how tall the wall is, to be 8 feet. And we're going to make sure the justification is on left. Now, when you're drawing around, if you're drawing this in a clockwise motion, you want the justification to be left. And I'll show you why right now. If I go 10 feet, you'll notice that this wall will then close on that shape. It'll, it'll make a tight corner. If I don't have the justification on left, like if I hit shift twice right now, that'll make it a right justification. And it would actually be a 10 foot wall plus 3.5 inches, which we don't want. So we want that to close and be a tight corner. So that's why the justification has to be on left if you're working clockwise. If you work working counterclockwise, you would make it on right, okay? So now I'm gonna go 12 feet down, I'm gonna go 10 feet to the left, and then I'm gonna close, okay? Next thing, I'm gonna go to the door tool, okay? And actually, before we even go to that, let's draw our lines again. We're gonna go midpoint to midpoint, and we're gonna go midpoint to midpoint again, whoops. 
and same spacing here. I'm going to do an offset of 18 up and down. That's going to be my three feet between my windows. I actually do not have to get the other sides of the windows and you'll see why in a second. Same thing with the door. I'm going to go three foot door. So we're going to go half of that, which is 18 inches to the left. And you can just get rid of this line and you don't need the right side of it. So now when I go to the door tool, you'll see up here, it says description and it says browse. If I click where it says browse, I can change the style of the door to be anything I want. So let's go with a hinged single exterior door. Double click on that, hit the X. It'll say, select the wall that you want to put it on, click this wall. And then for now, I'm just going to click this down anywhere. And then I'm going to take this, I'm going to move it from the inside of the trim and I'm going to put it on my line I created. Don't forget to erase that line back there by doing a blue box around it. You'll notice that the sill is actually facing in right now. So what you're going to do is select on the door and you're going to hit this arrow right here, which is going to flip the direction of it. And then you can flip the direction left to right in order to make the door swing the way that you want it to swing. Okay. All right. So looking at the windows, I'm going to go to my window tool and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click on browse. For these windows, I'm going to use a double hung, so I can just double click on double hung and then hit the X. It'll say, what wall do you want it on? And actually, before we do that, make sure you make the width be two feet and make sure you make the height be three feet six. That's just the size of the windows that I'm going with. Click on the wall that you want to put it on. Click it down anywhere and we'll click a second one down anywhere. It actually makes it easier if you click it away from those lines because now you can see them. Click on the window, go to move, which is just M enter, and then click on the inside of the trim and put that on that line. And then don't forget to blue box and erase that line. Same thing on the top one. We're going to grab this window from the inside of the trim, move that onto the line and get rid of the line. Now, here's the first thing that's going to be a big difference. If I were to go to the bottom right corner of this box, that's going to be my isometric view, my 3D view. You'll notice that the walls and windows have already become 3D on their own, which is really nice. In this one, it's still flat. So we have to build that manually. It's not a problem. Let's keep going and see what happens, okay? I've got two boxes out here. I want to extrude both of those up by eight feet. That's going to be an eight foot wall. I want to then subtract from the main model, the main box, and then you're going to hit enter the smaller box and hit enter. And what that's going to do is that's going to hollow out the inside and make it so it's like four walls. Okay. Going back to 2d wireframe, I'm going to take my door and extrude that up a height of six feet, eight. I'm going to take my two windows, whoops, and move them up to the height of six feet, eight. Then those two can be extruded down the height of the windows, which would be negative three feet six. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to actually select the door, the window and the other window and make a copy of those. So if you do control C and then control V, you can just put those right out there. The reason why we're doing that is because when I go to subtract from the main model and then I hit enter and then I want to click the door window and window and hit enter. That's going to subtract them in order to make the holes in the wall. So the doors and windows are not there anymore because we subtracted those models away. But since we made a copy, we can move this back over and let's actually do one at a time here. Let's grab this and use the move tool and go right to the midpoint of this wall. That's going to give you a nice recessed door. You can grab these two at the same time, move tool, grab it from this point right here. And we don't want this point because that would fill it in solid. We want to go to the midpoint right behind that, which is right there. So we get two recessed windows. Now, big difference already. It's taken us about three minutes to draw this one and maybe about 10 minutes to draw this one. And the other problem is, is that I've got really high detailed doors and windows on this one and this one. And let's go to uh, conceptual just so you can see that. And this one, I've just got plain doors and windows. And I would actually have to create my own 3D models of those shapes in order to put them in there and make them look nice. So that is a big difference already. OK, but let's move on. Going to the top and going back to 2D wireframe on both. I'm going to draw a roof now. Okay. On AutoCAD architecture, if I go behind this roof slab tool, I can grab roof. 
I can click the four outside corners. You'll see it starts to build itself and you hit enter. Now we actually should have, let's back up a step here. Let's go back to that roof tool. Whoops. We're going to actually change the thickness to be five and a half, the edge cut to be plumb. We're going to change the overhang to be six inches. Mine was already set. And we're going to change the rise to be six inches. So it's going to give us a pitch of six twelve, which is just a six inch rise over a 12 inch run. All right. So now when I go and I click my outside corners and then I hit enter at the end, you'll notice that in a 3d view, I've got a hip roof, which is fine. If you want a hip roof, it's already done. But in this case, we want a gable roof. So we're going to go back to the top. We're going to click on this roof. We're going to grab this point and just drag that straight up and click up here somewhere. And then click this one and drag that down and click that somewhere. Now we've got our gable roof. The only thing missing is that there's a gap here above the wall and below the roof. So we got to plug that in somehow. So here's how you do that. If you grab the wall and you right click and you go to roof floor line, edit in place. You're going to do add gable, click the top of the wall. You'll see that it tries to add a gable here, but then you're going to click on this gable. Whoops. And you're going to click on this little dot here and you're going to drag that down to this height. That's going to plug that end in and we're going to do the same thing on the back. Grab the wall. Oh, by the way, hit finish. Grab the wall, right click, go to roof floor line, edit in place, add gable, click the top of the wall, grab the gable, grab the little dot, bring that down to this level and then hit finish. This model over here is done. Let's go back to the other one. Okay. Now this one's a little trickier. I'm going to go back to the front view for a second and I'm going to just turn this down. I'm just orbiting, which is just holding shift and then holding the scroller down on your mouse at the same time. And then you can move your mouse in order to orbit, or you can use the orbit tool out here. That's up to you. Okay. Um, so I'm going to draw a line across the top here like this, and then I'm going to draw a line off of the midpoint of that line. And I'm going to go straight up. And I'm going to explain why in a second, go back to the front. My pitch is going to be 612. Okay. So if I go off of this corner, I'm going to go 12 inches to the right and then I'm going to go six up. Okay. So that's a 12 inch run and a six inch rise. And then I'm going to close. Don't forget to erase these two lines. I drew this line here so I can have something to extend this to. I can then trim this line. I won't even, even actually need that line in a second, but let's just leave it there for now. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to mirror it. M I enter, click the line, hit enter, and then go from here to here. It's going to say, do you want to erase the source object? You say no. Then you can erase your middle line. I'm going to take one, two, three, and I'm going to make a copy of those because that's going to help us fill in that wall gap later. The same thing's going to happen on this one. So you can go ahead and take these three and join them together and we'll play around with those in a second. Now it's telling me I'm getting one object discarded, which means that the bottom did not connect. So what I'm going to do, and this happened earlier when I was messing around with this model, I'm just going to take a polyline and you can do this anytime this happens. If you go to join something together and it just doesn't want to go together, even though the lines are on the same plane, you can try a couple things. One of them is you can take a polyline and just trace around the outside. And now you've got one polyline that's already closed, or you could type flatten, remove hidden lines. Yes. And then that should flatten it and allow you to join it together. And now we've got one joined into one polyline, which worked as well. Okay. Uh, we do need both. So we'll just keep both one for the front and one for the back. All right. So now next thing we're going to do is we're going to take these two and we're going to copy those up and they're going to go that 5.5 thickness. Then I'm going to take this line and I'm going to extend that out by six inches. That's going to be my six inch overhang. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a dummy line. And if you're new to my videos, the dummy line is just a line that you draw that you're going to erase later, but we need it there in order to get the position of something. So I'm going to do extend. I'm going to extend this line to that dummy line, which is why I had it there. Now you can erase them. You can take the line tool again and you have to draw down 5.5. 5. 
and then trim here. And actually that line's just gonna be erased. So go ahead and erase that line now, we don't need it. But you are going to extend this and that. You're gonna grab these three and those three, join them together, you get a six to one. We can now go into our 3D view. Now mine actually dropped to the back, but that's fine. Yours might be in the front. Extrude, going back this way is gonna be a positive number. We're gonna go 12 feet. Now, you'll notice that 12 feet is not gonna give us a six inch overhang on the front and the back. So really we wanted to go 13 feet. So I'm gonna grab this triangle here and I'm gonna bring this this way. For you, the triangle might be back here. So just grab the triangle and bring that back, okay? But you're gonna bring it on the green line and you're just gonna type 12, enter. Now it overhangs the front by 12 inches and the back by zero inches. So move, grab it anywhere, move it back six inches. And now we've got a six inch overhang on both sides. Going to conceptual, you'll see that we're at this point right here. Going back to 2D wireframe, I'm gonna take these, which are already joined together, and I'm gonna extrude them, negative 3.5. One of these, you're gonna grab from the outside, and make sure you hit the right corner here. Drop this on this corner, not the corner of the roof. That corner. This one, you're gonna grab from the back, and you're gonna do the same thing. It's gonna go on the back. And then the last thing we gotta do is union one, two, whoops. Don't union the roof in because you might wanna put a different material on there. So let's see if we can zoom in a little bit and we'll get that one, and then zoom in and we'll get that one. Enter. Now, conceptual. Boom. So listen, if you guys are looking to do any kind of architecture work, houses, buildings, sheds, you know, anything you can possibly imagine, I would go with AutoCAD architecture because it's just so much faster. If you're going with, you want a software that's more robust that you can make anything out of, then AutoCAD's your answer. If you can have both, that's great. I have both because I'm a teacher and you can get the software for free. Uh, students can get it for free. Family members of teachers and students, if you wanna share the license, can get it for free. And if you're interested in how to do that, I have a link in my description, all right? So listen, guys, if this video was something that you enjoyed, please hit like on the video, that helps out the channel. You could subscribe to the channel as well so you can see more of my content. And if you wanna know anytime I upload something, click that little bell down there, all right? I really appreciate you guys watching. Again, from my family to yours, Merry Christmas, and I'll see you guys later.